What is up YouTube? Let's talk about physical modeling synthesis. Physical modeling synthesis is essentially a sort of sound design or synthesis technique that applies real world characteristics to the sort of sound design process. So I'm going to use a couple of different examples to show you guys essentially what it is and a couple of really cool ways of incorporating it into your music. So we're going to start with recreating a little bit more of a sort of traditional sound and then we're going to go into creating all sorts of weird stuff. So I'm going to start off with UVI Falcon and then we're going to have a look at VCV Rack, which is some free software. I find that UVI Falcon is just a little bit easier to get the sort of more traditional stuff going. The sort of capabilities within that plugin are so vast that it's quite easy to, you know, get some, like I said, traditional stuff going. Whereas when you start looking at stuff like VCV Rack, the possibilities are endless. So you can start to get some really weird sort of stuff going. So without me blabbering on for too much, without showing you guys some examples, let's dive right into it. So like I said, first up, we're going to try to recreate a sort of more traditional sound using the physical modeling capabilities of UVI Falcon. I'm working on this kind of like chill, ambient, side chill type of track. And I was thinking that a guitar sound would work really well in this track. And at the same time, I thought it would also be a great way to kind of show you guys the capabilities of physical modeling, you know, being able to create a sort of more realistic sort of sound by applying the characteristics of like how a guitar would actually sort of sound off in the real world. So yeah, let's dive into UVI Falcon. So the physical modeling oscillator inside Falcon is called Pluck. So let's drag this to our mapping section. So how physical modeling works is you have what's called an exciter and then you have the actual sort of synth algorithm. So in a sort of guitar example, Let's say our exciter would be the plectrum or the fingers or the pick, whatever you want to call it. And our synth algorithm would be how that particular plectrum or finger sound affects the sound of the synth itself. So the cool thing about Falcon is not only does it have a bunch of really cool excitation samples built in, but you can actually load up your own samples to use. So you could load up like speech to use as exciters and all sorts of weird stuff. But we're going for a slightly more traditional thing here. So let's go with Pluck 3. I found that one sounds, sounds good, so we can choose that one. So now how this works is you've got this sort of mixer built in, and this allows you to mix between the actual synth sound and the sample that you're using for the excitation, as well as some sort of noise generation. This is really cool because particularly in a sort of guitar example, you do hear a very little bit of that sort of plectrum coming through, if you're, for example, creating like a marimba sound, you would hear the sound of that mallet hitting the marimba. So anyway, so you can detune the actual sample and there's various sort of parameters that you can do. You can actually set the start point and all sorts of stuff. So if, if you're loading up a sample, you can do various parameters and stuff, but I'm using one of the built-in ones and often they already sound sort of pretty close to like what I'm going for. So I'm gonna leave these settings as is, but here on the mixer, Let's give, uh, let's mix up the synth a little bit. Let's give us a little bit of sound of the actual sample itself and just a little bit of white noise. So let's have a listen to what we're dealing with so far. It's, so it's already starting to slightly take the shape of a sort of guitar sound, but there's various sort of parameters which we can play with that can maybe accentuate that like slight guitar sort of effect that we're going for. So here let's add some brightness. That'll kind of give us more of a sort of electric guitar type of tone. And then this pick filter over here, this kind of emulates whereabouts the excitation algorithm is being applied to the sort of string of the sound, if I'm not mistaken. So you can kind of change this position and that'll change almost kind of like where the physical sort of attribute is exciting the string if that kind of makes any sense.
So keep in mind, you can velocity map any of these. So if you are wanting to get a kind of like dynamic playability in your patch, you can link, for example, how the pick reacts to velocity or any of the sort of MIDI parameters uh, that you would like. And then these settings over here, these adjust how the sort of sound rings out after the initial excitation. So you've got various controls here. So to get the closest uh, to a sort of like electric guitar sound that I could get, I found, I set the decay down to around there, the brightness to around 70% or so, and then the bridge loss, I set this down. That's also basically like another decay type of setting and also a little bit of cutoff, just so it like rings off almost naturally uh, where the kind of like harmonics kind of like ring off lower and lower. So a very important characteristic of the electric guitar sound is obviously the sort of overdrive and distortion and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some overdrive over here. They've actually got a preset here called For My Guitar. And on the overdrive, I actually just maxed out the input and the overdrive and also turned the trash up quite somewhat, turned the gain down a little bit. And then I also added this analog crunch. And what I did here is I just turned this overdrive up quite a bit, turned the trash up quite a bit and about 30% or so. And then I turned the output gain down because it's gonna obviously boost the signal quite a bit. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like now. Okay, so it sounds a little bit messy, but here's where the trick comes in. And then here, under the layers effects, uh, under drive distortion, we can add this guitar boxes. And you can choose any one of these. The, I just basically chose the jazz and then kind of tweaked from there. All I did was I think I changed the amp to the Alston Classic and then a condenser mic. And then I added some reverb, the spark reverb that's built in here. Just any of these will do. Let's just go with a plate for now. Cool, that's starting to get there. So one thing that's a kind of like important aspect to guitar is the fact that it's a kind of polyphonic instrument to a certain degree, but each of the strings are monophonic instruments. So a cool way that you could apply that in a sort of patch is to create glide times, but for example, create different voices with mono glide times in different octaves. So what we can do is, let's say, for example, let's just set up the, uh, the sort of glide for the first string. So let's set this to mono portamento, and we can turn the glide style to proportional. And I think we can leave the time as is, and this is kind of what it's going to sound like now. We can actually turn the glide down a little bit. Cool. So we've set up one string and it's sounding decent. So now what we can do is we obviously don't want to be able to slide from like the bottom octave all the way up to the highest possible note on a guitar because you wouldn't be able to do that. You would have to, you know, go through six strings to get from the bottom to the top. So what we can do is we can break up our patch into separate kind of like key groups. So let's say, for example, let's just drag this all the way down like this, it's even a little bit low. Okay, so we're going to set it up so that each string is going to emulate two octaves. It's not quite as realistic as a, on a real guitar, but it's going to work for the sort of uh, for what we're trying to achieve. So what we can do is let's right click on the key group and say duplicate selected key group. And then we can just drag it over. We're going to want to make sure that this a uh, root note doesn't move. So actually, we want to alt drag, not regular drag. And that makes sure that the root note stays exactly where it was before. Now we've created two strings that have their own kind of like portamento or glide. And that's kind of slightly more realistic to how a guitar would sound off. Let's repeat this process till we have a couple more octaves. Cool. So let's hear what this sounds like. 
So it's still portamentoing all the notes. So why is that? That's because the portamento in Falcon applies to the entire layer and not each specific key group. So now what we can do is we can right click on each of these and go here, move key group to new layer and keep doing that to all of these key groups. And we should have our various voices. Okay, so I've made a mistake. We need to put these guitar box and spark verb onto the program layer effects. So let's do that quickly. Guitar box, I was with, went with jazz, Alston classic and a condenser mic. You can actually kill this guy. And let's go spark verb over here. So now for each of these layers, we might have to just go in and make sure that they're each mono portamento. And we can set a sort of slightly different glide if we want a sort of more sort of uh, dynamic approach. Uh, we can just double click on each of the key groups. Cool. Let's see how this sounds over a track. Put some MIDI in, see how this sounds. So another thing that's quite important to guitar play style is vibrato. And that can be recreated with an LFO on the pitch. And quite a nice way of sort of creating that kind of like modulation could be using something like aftertouch or even velocity to control the amount of modulation that gets applied to the pitch. So we can go here to this sort of pitch control here of this oscillator. And let's just go add modulations. And let's go for new LFO and then let's go edit modulations. So here we can set it to like rise, which will create like a ramp from when we first pluck the sound to when the sound actually sounds off, something like this. Okay, that gets a little bit too much. So we can actually turn the depth down quite a bit here. So here, what we can do is we can set this sort of uh, modulation modulator, I guess that's what it would be called, to be controlled by something like, let's say, aftertouch. So that's cool because then like the harder you press down on the keyboard after you've kind of had that initial velocity, you can kind of alter the way that that kind of note plays off. And that creates a, a much more of a sort of natural sound to the way that you're articulating the notes. And um, if that kind of makes sense. So that kind of creates a slightly more of a sort of humanized way of playing, specifically if your MIDI keyboard has got uh, aftertouch is very cool to play with those types of uh, controls if you're going for that kind of more natural sound. So here we can also set that to control something like the actual frequency of that vibrato. So let's go add modulation and channel aftertouch. And here we can go edit this modulation. And here we can change the amount that that gets modulated.
So that's cool because now you're not limited to only creating guitar sounds with it. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this patch so that I can give it to my Patreons for the ones who are using the ones who are using Falcon. And now we can go and experiment with the sort of characteristics of the physical modeling side of this sound. So let's have a look at what happens when we start to add different excitation algorithms here. So we could, for example, brush or bow the guitar string, let's choose one of these bows over here and listen to what kind of stuff this creates. So here we can maybe go and uh, turn off the distortion and stuff because I think that's what's creating that very kind of like guitarish tone. So let's turn off guitar box and these like overdrive and analog crunch over here. So we can kind of get more of an idea of what's happening here. So it's cool for creating those kind of like ethnic type instruments, you know, like uh, sitars and dulcimers and that kind of stuff, but also being able to kind of like add your own spin on it, you know, being able to, for example, like portamento those types of effects and, you know, create your own kind of like take on those types of sounds, but still using those types of sounds as sort of inspiration for your actual sound that you want to create. I actually like that sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the other key groups. So now I'm not going for that guitar type of sound anymore. And then I can save the patch as like a single voice kind of like Eastern sitar type sound.
Okay, so here's where we're going to start getting a little bit experimental. So I've made a quick patch in VCV rack. Basically, the idea here is it's just a sequencer triggering resonator. It's basically the reproduction of mutable instruments rings, which is also a physical modeling synthesizer, but for Eurorack. So this is really cool because you can send in any audio signal to use as the sort of excitation algorithm. So what I've done is I've loaded up this player module and we're going to load up some samples and send them into that input and then play around with like all sorts of stuff with that sort of sample. So this is the patch that I've got so far. I've also just got a little kick drum going to keep a sort of rhythm going. So what's happening here is we've got a trigger that's triggering a sort of internal excitation algorithm that's inside Resonator. But what we can do is we can move this over to trigger a sample that's like loaded in player here, and then send the audio output into the input of Resonator. And we get all sorts of weird things start to happen there. And this is what they sound like. So that's a clap sample. We're not limited to using a clap. We could use anything. So let me load up some random samples in here and let's play around. Here I've loaded up a cowbell. Let's listen to what that sounds like. So we can also, for example, like key track this cowbell sound by sending modulation either from like the CV to the actual sort of speed input. And then the faster, well, the higher the CV is or the higher the note is, then the faster it's going to play through that sample. And we can also modulate the start point, which is pretty interesting. And let's start sort of with lower notes, not really exciting that much, and then move backwards with the more sort of modulation that gets applied there. Get all sorts of weird things start to happen here. So we've created like a sort of kalimba thumb piano type sound using a cowbell and some sine waves or whatever synthesis algorithms are built into rings or resonator. 
And that's pretty cool, but we can actually do some really weird things by actually processing the audio input before sending it in as a sort of excitation algorithm. And I think this is where the sort of like uh, power of modular can kind of be seen over something that's kind of like got built in excitation samples and stuff like that. So here, for example, what we can do is we can apply like reverbs or even something like uh, mutable instruments clouds or as it's called texture synthesizer in VCV rack. So let's do something like that. Let's load up a texture synthesizer and let's send the audio in and then into the in. So here what we can do is we can, you know, maybe key track this V oct over here. Might need to gain this up a little bit. So here we can start to get some really weird like uh, granular type of stuff going on before sending it as a sort of excitation algorithm over here. So let's play around with this a little bit. Okay, whoa, so that's some pretty weird alien type of sounds. So the cool thing about Resonate is you've actually got a multitude of different algorithms built in here. So you're not limited to the modal resonator as it's called, but all these different types of sort of sounds that all have their own kind of particular character. So you can cycle through these and get all sorts of weird stuff going on. So check this out. Well, that was crazy. <laughs> All 
Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed my video on physical modeling, both the sort of more traditional stuff and the weirder things that you can do with it. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Do you guys use physical modeling synthesis already? Let me know in the comments and what synths and techniques and stuff that you guys use to get these types of weirder or traditional type of stuff. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.